I'm going to talk a little bit about how we covered these piles. Uh, we've had some questions about this, and some of you guys that do this stuff know all about this, but there's some of you that maybe in your area they don't do it like this. This is basically on a concrete slab that's in our yard. Now, first of all, we've had comments about why we wouldn't do bags, like, and they got eight, nine, ten foot. I mean, they come in all kinds of different sizes. I don't know a lot about it. We've never done it. And the thing is that I... I can't really do it here is because we're so hilly and uneven that I would have to be way down in my flats with <laughs> half a mile from my barn to have a spot big enough or level enough to put it on. I, from what I understand, they would start to roll on me if I was able to, you know, to try to put it someplace like where this, like where this pile is. There's quite a bit of slope here in our yard, but this works actually pretty good. And this is a lot cheaper. I mean, bags are good. They make good feed. It's just, it's just something for us. It's just something I never wanted to get started in. So, for instance, now, this here, the cover on this is, I believe this pile is probably about 65 feet long. So our cover, and, and, and it's 32 feet wide. So our cover is a 40 by probably 70 you know you got to have some lap i had some 32 covers bought that i didn't wasn't able to use because this pile ends up getting bigger than than i thought it was going to get so what you, you need to have the width of the pile plus maybe two feet extra all the way around so you can pin it down with dirt or gravel bags or whatever anyway so what we did when we did the the hay we put the 40 foot wide on and we pinned it down, maybe not quite as good as this, but we did a pretty good job. And then about two weeks later, we opened up for corn silage. And we put like seven loads of corn on here, corn silage on here. And then I put a 32 on, and then I put the, the 40 that was on here back on again too. So it's actually doubled up. And the reason is, is because of these creatures right here. And that guy right there and being so close to the barn in the middle of the yard here you're not going to prevent them guys from climbing up on it so then we bought this um several years back we bought this stuff the company's called bagman i think i don't remember now i'd have to look it up but it's actually a, it's almost like a mesh but it's kind of a plasticky material and and, and you can get it in in uh different widths and lengths and there's actually two different pieces. I think it's like 32 by something. I don't know. There's two different ones here. And the problem with this, it's a great product to use to put over the top of your plastic to prevent it from hail and the, the rodents and whatever, your dog and, and things like that. But the problem with it is, you know, we're in the upper Midwest where we get some pretty harsh winters. And this pile, we'll be starting this pile. So right now it's late September. So we'll be starting the feed out of this pile probably in early October. And I'll probably almost be through this pile by December. Maybe into middle of December. I expect this to last till almost to Christmas. Which means I'll be past our green cover. So this cover I will fold back up, put on a pallet. That's why that pallet's there. Along with the gravel bags. As we feed it out, we'll keep rolling it back. And then eventually just take it right off, fold them up and then put them in the shed for until next year. And then I would just have the white plastic, which there we just take a knife and just cut it off as we feed. And that gets that gets thrown away. Otherwise, this stuff freezes down and, there, and you will ruin it trying to get it off. That's why we don't use it on everything. So you kind of gauge it that way. So again, it's just another protection because I hear just a few days ago, not too far from us had like two to three inch hail, which would have, would have tore the white plastic completely up. There was no plastic that would hold up to that. And then these gravel bags, these are kind of neat. And they actually got handles on them too, so you can handle them. And they're just full of pea gravel. We bought these through the mail. They came through the mail, so then we had to fill them. So we just went down to our ready mix plant and we, you know, we filled them up. And, and then we use old tires that were, you know, from farm equipment and stuff to hold that down. And they claim the better you the more weight and the more stuff you put on it, the better results you get. I mean, it's just, you don't want this plastic flopping in the wind or air getting in it. The idea is to seal it down. And another thing I was going to mention is 
all these tires that we used to hold this down, they all have holes drilled on the low side. Every one of them has a hole in it, and it's always put to the low side that so that it um, doesn't harbor water. And it just makes it cleaner to handle them too. Years ago, we didn't have them all like that, but they're all drilled out now. One thing I didn't I forgot to add is the concrete pad probably starts in about here someplace. And I got a little bit of a divot along the edge of it. Kind of comes out where that cat is more. But this is all, that's the uphill side more. It's a low hill side more. And then we got some slope here to the yard, which goes down towards the shop. And the idea is, is we got rain gutters on the barn here. So we don't get a lot of water that would come off up into this area above the pile. But there'll still be some. If we get an inch or two of rain, I, I try to avoid getting the rainwater into it. It just seems the best way to clean it up. I thought about putting in on the bunker walls. I did look into some of that stuff, and I wouldn't do that up in the yard here. That wouldn't be good for the, that would be in the way for the, for other times of the year, but maybe down there. I think it's, they're a great idea too. There's different things when it comes to trying to cover and stuff. Um, where you have trouble with the water standing in them. They usually got to be perfectly level and flat. And it gets to be a little interesting trying to make that work. Again, we're so crunched for room here. Pretty much this yard is either, either there's a hill or a waterway somewhere. So we're just working around all that stuff. And we've been doing this for a long time. It's been working really well. So another thing I'm going to mention is we use gravel up here in the yard. It's the same stuff as in the driveway around the pile. Sometimes I'll just get a fresh load from our local excavating people and they'll bring me a load so I'll have some scoops. Otherwise sometimes I just scrape up a little here and there and, and let it there. So then as I feed this out, which I'll start on this end, we'll just feather this back out into the yard. And then the upside's got the gravel bags. So those will go on a pallet as we feed out. So really when we get all done, it's kind of like uh, everything is is not something I have to clean up and all away and then our tires we got a special spot where we we put those in and pile them up too so that they're ready for the next year again and one more thing I just thought of like when we cover these piles if at all possible and it doesn't always work out that way but we try to do it in the Sun when the Sun is hitting the tarp so you roll that tarp out and you open that up and usually want a little bit of help especially if there's a breeze it doesn't take as long. Something like this, maybe a half an hour with three people. I mean, everybody knows what to do and where to get stuff and and how to hold the tarp so it pins down tight. But you see how tight it's gotten on there. So if we cover that when it's warm and the sun hits it, it expands almost within minutes. It's expanding. And then as we're putting the gravel on, we'll have somebody pulling a little bit on each side of the skid steer as we're, we're trickling this gravel on. And then it ends up um, pinning it nice and tight. And then when it cools off in the evening or as you go into fall, it becomes extremely tight. And that's what you want. The less air, the better. This video may not come out until a little later on here this this fall or so. Um, it, you know, so we're, we're trying to do these things so that, you know, as we think of them, just kind of bear with us on that. We're trying to put videos together when it works for us. And, and that too a lot of times when we're in the blunt of trying to get things done we have to focus on what we're doing and not get too concerned about trying to get the all the shots and explain every little detail we got and i'll show you our big pile too and um, we kind of do the same thing down there so what's in this pile is a third crop hay so if you go back some videos on chopping third crop hay of 2022 um, that shows us putting that together and then we covered it and then two weeks later we opened it up put six loads of corn silage on top and packed that down and then recovered it. So basically we got two tarps on here. We got the original one and then, and then a new piece just to be sure. And there's a lot of feed in here for, for what you can shove into a silo anyway. For us anyway, it's a big pile. Now this is our big pile. Again, there's concrete underneath this and it's slanted. If there's some slope to that concrete. And there's a wall on the upper side, which is on this side. That's only like three feet tall underneath all that. So that's all buried under the silage, of course. But but we find we get pretty good results with this. It's quite the plan to get this all in here without having some kind of mishap. But this pile, I believe this tarp is 
This is a 50 by 150, and we only had about three feet of that we had to cut off, which probably didn't even pay cutting it off. But again, the same theory, and this one will get fed out from middle to late December, all the way until we make our first cutting of hay next spring or next early summer. So what's under here is there's probably, there's 60 acres of first crop in here. And then there's probably, I'm gonna take a shot at it, maybe 16 acres of corn silage. When we do it that way, it gives us a two to one mix as we're feeding out. So for instance, normally we like to start on this side. This is the south side of our pile. So the sun hits it as we're opening it up. The snow kind of melts off the concrete as we go along. And maybe about, so we, we get through, we maybe have 25 feet left at the end in the spring. So we'll take our end loader and we'll shove the top off after we take the tarp, the rest of the tarp off, and then we fill again. And then uh, now this year we'll start on the north side. So we always get rid of the old feed first. And uh, we're up there ways on this one. It's probably almost 12 feet deep in the middle. So there's a lot of feed on there. There's just well over 100 loads of stuff in here. And then we pin it with dirt all the way around the edges. Now up in the yard, we pin it with, with gravel on the low side and we pin it with the gravel bags on the upper side. So what we can do is as I feed that out, I can feather that gravel back out into our driveway area anyway. We're down here, the dirt is not quite as big a deal. Some of the dirt I try to sort back off and reuse and then some of it just goes out with the manure later if we'd happen to have a little spoiled silage or something. But usually if we do this right, if we, if we put this together right and keep our tarp on good, we don't get very, very little spoilage. And so we kind of do the same thing here with the tarps. After first crop hay, which is usually late May, early June, um, we put on a 40 by 120 feet worth roughly, or 130 feet, whatever it takes to cover it. And then in early September, when we do our corn silage, we take that all back off and we, we lay that, that tarp up, us, up on the upside in the grass alongside the pile. And once we get all our corn silage up on here, we pull that old tarp back over, which it's kind of tore up a little on the edges, trying to get some of this dirt back off. Sometimes I'll just take a knife and cut it and then push the, the dirt away with the skid steer. It's, sometimes it seems it's just as well. So we'll put that old tarp back on and then another new tarp over the top. So again, if we get hail, and then sometimes down here we may get a raccoon or something. It's very hard to prevent some of that. We're kind of double protected in a way, which it's still more efficient than trying to make another pile somewhere else. So now we're only digging out of one pile at a time. And I guess uh, it's kind of like a TMR mix. It's never 100% exact, but I think for all the finagling around the tight yard we got, the convenience of getting everything out of one pile versus going to two, and then especially when you gotta start pushing snow and it gets really cold and we don't have that big of a herd that we end up feeding that much at a time. This just ends up being the best way. I've done this for almost 30 years already like this. I've been putting these piles together since 1986. Oh, back when I lived at home with my dad yet and farmed with him. There was a few larger farms doing it. And uh, there was still a lot of silos and harvesters and all that stuff. And this one's kind of interesting. They've been selling them like this for a long time. I think this is what they call a five mil. And it has something to do with the strength of it or the thickness of it, I guess, or something. I mean, but they're all pretty much the same now, no matter who you really buy from, it seems anyway. They have to be because farmers catch on to that stuff pretty quick. If it's not holding up, you're not gonna pay a fortune for this stuff. And it's made out of petroleum, so it's not cheap. We used to buy these things for like $40 a piece to cover a big pile like this. Now they're like, oh my God, you can get close to $1,000 before you... So anyway, they're black. They used to always be all black. And I think the theory was so that uh, when the sun would hit it, it would melt the snow off and stuff. Then I think they realized in the warmer months it would get too hot and this stuff expands and contracts so much, it ends up kind of breaking it down so quick. So you had the option of putting the black up. Now you got white on the other side, and we always put the white up. And that's really what it's about. It's to reflect the sun so it doesn't get quite as warm to your feed. So you're basically sealing it up like a Ziploc bag. And then as we feed out, I'll take these tires 
and keep um, pushing them back, at least to a certain extent, so the part you didn't feed out is very much sealed down, especially along that edge. And then the colder it gets, the less you have to worry about that. Pretty soon you got ice and snow and all that stuff going on. But then once you get back into like, like April or March, April into early May, then you want to really seal that edge so you don't expose any more feed to, to air or oxygen than you absolutely have to. And you end up with pretty good results. So that's a little rundown of how we, we do our silage piles.